Hey, so I've just pulled up in front of a house I'm about to go look at. It's currently owned by an investor that's flipping this home for sale. But when you sell your personal home, there's a lot of what you do that needs to be treated just like an investor. What are you going to get a return on? What's going to help you sell the house? So we're about to go do a walkthrough of this home, and I'm going to point out some of the things that you need to pay attention to in your personal home when you're getting ready to sell. Now this particular house is older. It was built in 1961. So, you know, obviously there might have been a lot more to do in an older home than if you have a home that was built more recently. But it's going to be a wonderful example for what we're talking about today because this house was incredibly dated before. Old flooring, hideous carpet, wood paneling, uh, 1970s Formica counters, uh, old sink, old appliances. It, it was just the house needed so much work. So you wouldn't recognize it if I had before and afters for you. So I'm going to walk through and show you what's happened in this one to get it ready to go on the market. So the first thing you're going to see when you come in here is something that covers a lot of the house and that's going to be your paint. In this case, we just went back with an agreeable gray, which is a good neutral color to work with right now. And it's so important to have a clean paint job because it covers so much of the house in such a visible area. If you have bright, personal colors, typically not gonna work for everyone. You kinda of want a blank palette where it's going to appeal to everyone. Another thing that we've got in this one, they came in and they've painted all the baseboards in a nice job. Uh, after you've lived in your home for a couple of years, the baseboards tend to get a little bit dirty. And sometimes you can take a sponge and just clean them off real good and the color comes back. Sometimes they need a fresh coat of paint like this one does to pop. This was an older home that was built in the 60s, so it needed a little more renovation than something that was built more recently, obviously. So some of the other things that are really going to pop in addition to the new paint. We have new face plates for all of your outlet covers throughout the house for both your light switches and your, and your electrical outlets. So it's going to look nice, bright, clean, and new, and that's what you're really looking for. Up at the ceiling, we've got a scraped ceiling, so we went to a smooth ceiling with uh, and it's that lighting. This was a, a house originally had no overhead lighting, so coming back in and providing some overhead lighting is really gonna help brighten the house up quite a bit. Now, if you're in a house that had blinds, which this one has none, you would wanna come back in if you have any broken, dirty blinds, clean your blinds real good and replace any damaged or broken blinds. In this case, we don't have any blinds up yet, but if you're gonna replace blinds or new blinds, the two inch faux wood is the way to go. You're going to get a lot of bank to rip up with those. Now the kitchen in this house is a little bit of a work in progress. Turn the lights on so everyone can see good. But in this case, if you've got the old Formica countertops that are in bad shape, you're really going to want to consider coming in and doing something more modern. In this case, this is going to be a nice one with a great finish. You can see the beautiful laminate floors that went in. They're going to really pop with the white cabinets as opposed to your older brown look. And some new pools in the granite, as well as the glass top range. If you're replacing the range and getting new appliances in there, this is a great way to go with your stainless steel look. What you don't want to do is try to save $50 and go to something with the old metal eyes because it really cheapens the rest of the work you're doing. And that's the last thing you want is to spend a bunch of money into the house and be penny wise and pound foolish and not come in and try to save 50 bucks on a, on a range or $100 on a range that really undoes a lot of the good work you've already done. So, you know, this is what I want it to look like. I've got nice bright white cabinets that are going to pop with the new floor. And I've got some, some glass top range new appliances with the microwave over. I have a brand new sink over this way, which is good as well. And the, a nice high-end looking dishwasher. You don't have to spend a ton of money on appliances. You just want to have appliances that look like you spend a ton of money on a lot of times you can go into Lowe's, Home Depot, places like this and maybe get a good deal on something that's a scratch and dent because if this range had a busted up side on it, you'd never see it because of how it sits in the cabinets anyway, so it's not a big deal. So, or a returned item. Sometimes you get a great deal on an item that someone got in return for whatever reason. So we've got a nice new sink and faucet to go with our updated new appliances, our granite, our white. And then every room needs to have a focal point. In this case, the family room here is going to have a beautiful focal point, which is the fireplace. We went back and painted the brick white in this, so again, it really popped against this agreeable gray that you have around it with the built-ins. And of course, here are some cabinets that got painted. These need to go back in the bathroom, but 
the last thing we're going to do after the house is cleaned up. We'll have all the cabinets rehung. We'll come and photograph the house and get it ready to actually take pictures and go on the market. I'm not quite there yet, but we're really close. Um, something else that really can add a little detail that doesn't cost a lot of money is to come in and do a little bit of molding. In this case, we have a nice heavier molding down on the floor. We also have some chair rail in this room and some crown up here. When you get into the details like that with the crown and the nickel knobs and the grays, which are really in right now, that's what's going to make a house pop and that's how you're going to get top dollar for the home. So now we've seen the living areas in the room. So as we walk back through here, this is our doors that are being painted. You know, I really like a good Santa Fe or a six panel door if you're coming back in and replacing the doors. But if you have the older brown doors, at least take them down at a minimum and paint them white so they pop again and look, look newer instead of dating a house. This was a house built in 61, so it's still got the older doors in here, but a fresh coat of paint goes a long ways. And there's gonna be a washer dryer, water heater in this little mudroom. So coming down the hallway, you can see we've got the floors extending through. What you don't want to get into is to have a whole bunch of different flooring throughout the house. So we come into the bedroom, and this is not the owner suite, but we've got some built-ins and a Jack and Jill bathroom. So again, it's important not to skip out on the details. So everything in here, including the shelving, has got a fresh coat of paint, so it really stands out. You know, little things like that can really undo all the good work you do. Um, we've got nice bright white vents in the floor that you can see right here. You know, that's a big thing I see in a lot of homes, even homes that are 10, 15 years old, is those vents have had a little drip and they start to get a little bit rusty. You can replace vents like this at Lowe's for less than $15. So it's not an expensive thing. It's something anybody can do. It's a, a take a couple screws out, put the vent in, pop a couple screws in and you're in place. So if your vents are looking rusty or dated or in rough shape, you're gonna to wanna to swap those out with some new vents. So I'm going to come this way and we're going to move into, in this case, the Jack and Joe bathroom. Now if this house built in 61, you could go one of two ways. In this case, they chose to keep it a little more retro. So we've got, even though this is a new vanity, they kept something that was kind of, had that time period look to it and kept the original floor and tile in place. Because it's all in good shape and the grout's in good shape, if your grout is starting to get a little bit dirty, you're going to want to clean that up so that it looks nice and bright and it pops. Uh, new vanities, bright lights, make the house light and bright when you show it is a great thing. So we do have a new vanity as well as the new vanity lighting in this particular room. Coming back in into the other bedroom. So this is again a Jack and Jill bedroom. Here's the trade, ladders, essential underwear because you have to get up here and swap out our new ceiling fan. And you can see what an example, I'm going to shut this door a little bit. You can see what I talked about when you come in with the fresh coat of paint and nickel knob what it can really do for a home. So if I come this way, we're headed into the master bedroom. There's a little bit of walls there. So we've got the floor in here. Yeah, so we've taken the same floor all the way through the house, put a fresh coat of paint on the closet doors. This is a pretty good closet for House of 61 because it's had the custom built-ins in place. So you have something to work, and then we've got the master bathroom over there, which I'm not gonna bother to show you for the sake of time because it looks pretty similar to the bathroom we just came out of. But again, you can see in here, new ceiling fan, new light fixtures, wonderful to bring a house back. These are things that, that can really bring a house back to life and help you get top dollar. Just to make sure, and if you're still living in the house and you can't do all this, that's okay. It's a big thing to have the house decluttered and depersonalized. Take down the, the personal photos. If you have any personal paint colors in there that are bright and really pop at you, you may want to come back and do something neutral like you see in here with this agreeable rate paint. But anything in that light gray, beige family is always a big plus. So this is going to be the family room again with the fireplace on the opposite wall. You can see the new vent, the chair rail that put in. But what you might not have noticed before is this room was incredibly dark and it had wood paneling. So if you have wood paneling, that's a kiss of death to date a house right there. So you can come in and paint the wood paneling. Better move is to remove it and put in sheetrock, but the less expensive move, if you do a good job with the paneling in the rest of the house, is to come in and paint it at a bare minimum. So here's a close up of the fireplace, and yes, don't forget the light bulbs and the doorknobs. Now, with the doorknobs, if you just simply go down towards the end of the Island Lowe's or Home Depot, you can get the Slage or the Gatehouse. And they cost a little bit less than the stuff they put at the front of the row. 
I can replace interior knobs for about $9 per if there's a lock on there. And if it's just for a closet door or something that doesn't need a lock on there, you're actually looking at more like 4 to $5 for those. So you can see the nice white paint, how it pops with the recessed lighting in the crown and really creates a focal point for this room. Did the same thing by painting the built-ins. So here's a close-up of the living room ceiling. And if I pan up, you can see the recessed lighting that went in. So there it is. And we've got a nice clean look to that as well. So we're just going to get a close-up of the floor, the light switches, and I'm going to show you an air return that got done as well. It's not just the little vents, but sometimes on these air returns, you need to go in and swap those out. Again, you know, you don't want to not spend the $15 for something like that to undo the $10,000 worth of flooring you put into a house. One last thing to mention on this one is make sure before you go and spend any amount of money or time doing those type of projects that you actually have taken care of the rest of the home because the last thing you want to do is put lipstick on a pig. Make sure your roof is in good shape. Make sure your plumbing and pipes and subflooring and all that is in good shape because you don't want to go spend all that money on flooring and everything else just to come in and have to replace the subfloor and rip out anything you've done. So again, don't try to do lipstick on the pig. Pretty much everyone gets inspections these days. You're not going to hide anything, so do it right the first go-round so you don't have to come back in and redo anything later.